Hello there everyone, welcome to the parallel universe where I still make videos. Grab a seat, there's coffee on the table, and let's do it like Sisyphus and push this boulder of a video up. Be aware that the modern consensus is that Claudius died of natural causes, being quite old. But in this short video I will talk only about the ancient historical accounts because those are more interesting than old age. Have you ever attended a party where people are much cooler than you? Well, that is the life of Emperor Claudius, well, before he became emperor. Not taking a stab at the guy, not at all, but his life was pretty hard even though he was born in the imperial dynasty. But we have Augustus as his uh, great uncle and his famous nephew Caligula. Again. It is not fair to compare him to Caligula, we know what kind of the guy he was, but Claudius is more famous for accidentally becoming emperor. Be advised that during this whole video we will call this guy Emperor Claudius, because that is his name and that's how we should call him, otherwise it is kinda rude. Our man was born in the respectable but turbulent Julian Claudian dynasty, and he is the first emperor born outside of Italy. He is described by ancient historians with knees weak and his arms are heavy, but full of dignitas when calm and seated. His early life was marked by difficulties, sickness, which led to a limp, and a slight deafness, which led to being shunned by his family, which led to being excluded from public offices. This might have been in his favor. The purchase during Tiberius and Caligula's reign avoided him because, you guessed it, he wasn't seen as a threat. The only thing that he did before becoming an emperor was holding the consulship once with his nephew Caligula. After becoming emperor, he did a Tyrion Lannister move and surprised everyone by being a competent emperor. What he did, you wonder, as a competent emperor? New roads, aqueducts, canals and a huge project of a draining lake for more arable land in Italy. While this is all and good, he had to fight the senate and the ancient historians. He wasn't emperor through inheritance and then confirmation by the Roman senate, which was the tradition. He was emperor by a declaration of the Praetorian Guard, so he wasn't a five-star character you expect in a drop like Augustus, but he was a four-star character, which is still good. But for the Senate that ain't good enough and that led to many tensions with the Senate mainly on them not wanting to debate his bills. That spiraled into Claudius stripping the Senate of some of its power so that the state is more efficient in his mind. Senators did not like this and started planning to murder him. P.S. All of the Senators that plotted against him died. Now, let's look at the plot that actually succeeded. For you, dear viewer, in order to understand why Claudius died being poisoned by his wife Agrippina the Younger, I will have to explain something about imperial inheritance. Imperial inheritance wasn't primogenitor, it was being chosen by the emperor as an heir, or being alive after everyone died, or being chosen by an army, typically a legion or two, or being chosen by the Praetorian Guard. This human, designated by her mother as Julia Agrippina, married Emperor Claudius in the wonderful year of 49 AD. At the same time, Nero became Claudius' stepson, as any good mother, she wanted the best for her son, aka become an emperor. There is, however, one small problem. Emperor Claudius already has a son, Britannicus. Moreover, Claudius starts to regret his marriage and wants Britannicus to be his heir. This puts Agrippina into a state of panic, that Nero will lose his place and all of her work will be for nothing. So, she prepares an assassination. It's Sunday, October 13th, 54 AD. Soon, the Ides of October will start. It's the year of Asinius Marcellus and Asilius Aviola. The emperor is having a banquet with his family. The mood is joyful and Claudius is savoring his favorite mushroom dish. The mood shifts when Claudius stops speaking, he wobbles from side to side and starts vomiting. He will die shortly, but his death was kept secret until Agrippina prepared her son's ascension. And for you to have a clearer picture, 
we will use the Suetonius account, which reads Although it is generally accepted that Claudius was poisoned, there is a disagreement over when and by whom. There are those who claim that Agrippina gave him the drug in mushrooms during a family meal. Others claim that Eunuch Halotus was his taster. Accounts diverge over what transpired next. Many claim that he lost all ability to speak as soon as he ingested the poison and that he passed away just before daybreak after going through a terrible pain all night. Some claim that after going into a stupor, he puked up everything in his overfull stomach and was given another dose, possibly in the form of a gruel on the ground that he needed to be fed after becoming exhausted. Another theory holds that the second dose was given to him via a syringe as thought he was experiencing a surfeit and needed to be relieved by that method of evacuation as well. In the end, it is clear that Emperor Claudius did not have the best death according to ancient historians. We all know that violently emptying the contents of your stomach does not feel great. Claudius was a decent emperor, tried to fix the state, made some reforms, conquered Britain, killed some senators, but in the end, all of his work was annulled by his stepson Nero. My man couldn't even have the status of God after his death for a long time because Nero cancelled it, but Vespasian came to the rescue and reinstalled his status as God. As a conclusion, I will read Suetonius again regarding what omens were around Claudius' death and before his death, especially regarding his fear of death. The principal omens of his death were the following. The rise of a long-haired star, commonly called the comet. The striking of his father's Drusus' tomb by lightning. And the fact that many magistrates of all ranks had died that same year. There are besides some indications that he himself was not unaware of his approaching end, and that he made no secret of it. For when he was appointing the consuls, he made no appointment beyond the month when he died, and on his last appearance in the Senate, after earnestly exhorting his children to harmony, he begged the members to watch over the tender years of both, and in his last sitting on the tribunal, he declared more than once that he had reached the end of a mortal career, although all who heard him prayed that the omen might be averted. Thank you for watching.